This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Bravest Warriors, one of the most popular animated web series from the early 2010s. Originally hosted on YouTube, the show boasted high-quality animation that rivaled that of a television network show, which, for YouTube, was a rare sight to behold. Most viewers were used to videos that featured amateur animation that were done via Flash, but Bravest Warriors had hand-drawn animation from a professional studio. It also had professional writers, producers, voice actors, directors, the whole nine yards. There was no denying that Bravest Warriors was on a mission, and that was to demonstrate the explosive potential of an online audience. And they did just that. Bravest Warriors gained millions upon millions of views, which was no easy task back in the early 2010s. It was undeniably one of the most popular animated web series on YouTube with fans hungry for more. Fan theories, fan art, fan blogs, and of course the tip of the meme spear, Catbug. Ah! 2012 to 2014 was a golden era for Bravest Warriors, with two seasons featuring 24 episodes in total, plus a handful of minisodes. Now, on the outside looking in, it seemed that Bravest Warriors was an unstoppable force of nature. It had cemented itself as this off-the-wall, high-quality web series that had organically grown with its viewers on YouTube. But then something unexpected happened. Something that left fans and viewers confused and frustrated. Bravest Warriors went silent for nearly three years. Fans waited patiently and hoped for good news. The YouTube channel that hosted Bravest Warriors, Cartoon Hangover, would post updates about the series and season three, but said updates were cryptic and few and far between. But in 2016, fans finally got their answer. But it was bad. So bad that it essentially killed the popularity and momentum of Bravest Warriors on the spot and left many viewers enraged. What followed was a long and drawn out death march for the once popular web series. A series that unceremoniously concluded in June of 2018 in relative obscurity. What happened? How did such a powerhouse cartoon come to such a grinding halt? Yes, it takes time to make animated content, but something else was going on behind the scenes that led to the downfall of Bravest Warriors, and I needed to know why. What comes across as a deceptively simple answer is, in actuality, very complicated and incredibly messy. This, folks, is the story of a grand experiment that ended in tragic failure. So let's take a closer look at what ruined Bravest Warriors. Hello, friends? Friends? I'll never leave you. This is all your fault! In order to understand the fall of Bravest Warriors, one must know its origin, which is surprisingly complex, as it features multiple players who had hitched their wagon to this rising star. But it makes the most sense to start with the person who created the web series, Pendleton Ward. Penn is an accomplished writer, director, and voice actor in the animation industry, and is mainly known for creating the animation titan that is Adventure Time. For those who don't know, the pilot for Adventure Time was featured on Nickelodeon's Random Cartoons back in 2008. But the pilot was turned down by the network five times, a decision they would live to regret. But Penn had another pilot that was aired on Random Cartoons, one that bore a striking resemblance to the style of Adventure Time, but was about teenagers in space rather than a fantasy world. Unlike Adventure Time, Bravest Warriors would not be picked up by a TV network and instead remained dormant with the company who owned the series, Frederator Networks. Now, Frederator has been in the animation game since the late 1990s and is responsible for quite a few hits. Adventure Time, Fairly Odd Parents, My Life as a Teenage Robot, to name a few. So the company was no stranger to the animation industry. They just didn't know what to do with Bravest Warriors, since TV networks weren't really going for it. But maybe television wasn't the path to go. Perhaps another distribution method would be required. Enter YouTube. 
An actor in this story who would yield a blessing that would eventually transform into a curse. Are we really surprised here? I'll explain later on. The early 2010s saw a massive rise in online traffic, mainly due to the explosive proliferation of smartphones with consumers. The internet, which was seen previously as this niche and quirky pastime for computer nerds, was now transforming into a mainstream force of nature that everyone used daily, especially to consume media. YouTube wanted to grow with that momentum and launched a $100 million program in 2011 called the YouTube Original Channel Initiative. This was an attempt by YouTube to generate more original and high production content for their platform, a way to give it more credibility as a website and the level of quality it could attain with its videos and creators. Many high-profile celebrities were brought on board for this campaign, plus a handful of companies as well, with Frederator Network being one of them. They were now charged, and more importantly funded, with the task of creating original content for YouTube via their channel Cartoon Hangover. So, after years of remaining dormant, Bravest Warriors finally had an opportunity to grow on Cartoon Hangover. And folks, did it grow. It was the first big hit for the channel, and would only be rivaled by the success of Bee and Puppycat, a story for another day. Bravest Warriors also received a new coat of paint compared to its pilot, and was being developed by Breen Burns, Will McRobb, and Chris Viscardi. Wait, no Pin Ward? Where is he? Well, around this time, he was quite busy with his own show, Adventure Time, and entrusted Bravest Warriors to his colleagues, especially Breen since the two of them were previously roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. Unlike Adventure Time and its 20 or so minute episode runtime, Bravest Warriors would be around 5 to 7 minutes in length. This is most likely due to production cost, which makes things more challenging for the writers of Bravest Warriors. How does one effectively write a story-driven show in such short burst? Breen actually comments on this in an interview. It turns out that five minutes is just this weird sort of pocket of time that is very, very hard to tell a story and also very hard to just get across a joke. At this point in the video, I think I should tell you all what Bravest Warriors is about. For the record, this video is not a review of the series, so I'm going to keep this light. The show is a sci-fi adventure comedy set in the year 3085. We follow a group of four teenagers, Chris, Beth, Danny, and Wallow. They travel around the universe and use the power of their emotions to save aliens and planets and whatnot. Also, they're hormonally challenged teenagers, so romance! <laughs> Needless to say, they get into all kinds of adventures and trouble. They range from hosting alien parasites in their butts to stopping a Lovecraftian entity from obliterating existence as we know it. You know, stuff like that. Just like Adventure Time, Bravest Warriors includes a wonderful blend of silly dialogue and surreal and quirky humor, but also carries a compelling story that features fleshed out characters with their own distinct motives and arcs. Will the Bravest Warriors ever find their lost parents? Will Chris and Beth end up together? What's the deal with Chris and his emotion lord powers? All of it is surprisingly engaging and has good pacing. But it's also funny, which is very difficult to accomplish with such a short episode format. On top of that, the tone of the show is more mature, with spicier language and situations, but never to the point where it would be inappropriate for kids. Come on, Plum. Let's go hang out in my room before we get pregnant. Also, the setting of the show is delightful and takes full liberty of exploring a sci-fi universe with unlimited possibilities. I mean, come on, folks. It's always been Wankersham. There was no denying it. Bravest Warriors was an absolute hit, and Frederator, via cartoon hangover, was doing all it could to capitalize on this momentum so they could grow this brand for years to come. Merch, interviews, comics, behind-the-scenes videos with writers and voice actors, Watching the show on your 3DS, baby! Is there any other way to watch it? Yeah. Times were good back in 2012 and 2013. But under the surface, a big problem was forming. A problem that would begin an avalanche of issues for Bravest Warriors and would bring the entire series to its knees. YouTube pulled its funding. 
I got you a present! I'm a bomb! So, that brings us back to the main question of the video. What ruined Bravest Warriors? Well, a few things contributed to its downfall, but the main catalyst that began this series of events was YouTube abruptly ending its original channel initiative. According to sources, YouTube went way over budget with its original fund, and after 18 months of observing results, decided to axe the program and shut it down. It turns out that most viewers did not care for content from mainstream celebrities, and instead preferred the homegrown videos from original YouTube creators. Also, quite a few of the channels who participated in the program did not pull their weight and only uploaded a few videos, though there were a handful of channels who were able to make something of themselves by the end of the 18-month period, such as Cartoon Hangover. Actually, Frederator was quite ambitious in growing its presence as an animation hub on YouTube and launched multiple channels to capitalize on its momentum. But YouTube cutting its funding was a sudden and unexpected development for Frederator and its subsidiaries, because now they had to pay for Bravest Warriors and all of their other animated content on their own. And that's not cheap. To add insult to injury, YouTube changed its algorithm around this time to favor watch time over views, which effectively torpedoed animation channels on the platform. So, what to do? Frederator had a hit on its hands, but did not have the funds to continue uploading the series to YouTube. Cause Lord knows that making the money back through YouTube was not going to be enough. So it began nearly three years of cryptic and sparse updates from Cartoon Hangover in relation to Bravest Warriors. For the record, the final episode of Bravest Warriors Season 2 was in June of 2014, but it ended with plenty of loose ends, so expecting another season was reasonable, right? Hell, Cartoon Hangover even confirmed a third season in 2014, so at least there was that. According to rumors, the show was able to receive enough funds from the YouTube initiative to complete season three. But going beyond that was entirely up to Frederator through its own means. This is where things began to get really messy. In July of 2016, Cartoon Hangover finally revealed their future plans for releasing season three of Bravest Warriors. And fans were pissed. As you can see from these comments in the video, viewers were rightfully upset. A beloved, free-to-watch show that originally started on YouTube and achieved popularity through organic growth had gone silent on them for years. And now it was being exclusively uploaded to Verve? What the hell's a Verve? Verve. It's what you do. Well, it was a joint venture from Crunchyroll and Sony to create a premium streaming service that hosted ad-supported content, though one could also pay a subscription to remove the ads for, like, $10 a month which not many folks were leaping at at the time, or ever. To add insult to injury, Verve was not available to people outside of the US. So even if you wanted to support Bravest Warriors on Verve, you were out of luck if you weren't American. So that leads us to the Verve era of the Bravest Warriors, which was when season three and four were put behind a region-locked paywall. Honestly, what a middle finger to the international audience. If only there was a way to change the location of their PCs. Oh wait, there is. It's NordVPN. Yeah, got you with the ad. Out of nowhere. It's frightening to think that there was a time where I browsed the web without a VPN. Just popping around from site to site and being vulnerable. But no more. I now use NordVPN. And I genuinely use it all the time. I use it for accessing content all over the world and getting around those pesky region-blocked movies and shows. Like, if I want to watch something in Japan, I don't have to fly there to watch it. I can just change the location of my VPN and with a click of a button, voila, Japanese Netflix. Easy as that. And that is just one server out of 5,400 covering 60 countries. There are plenty of options to pick from. Also, NordVPN is super fast, with no bandwidth throttling, and streams to your PC and smart device with speed and security. Plus, Nord includes a threat protection feature, which offers even more security against cyber threats. It blocks trackers, malicious ads, and steers you away from harmful websites and files. 
So I highly recommend NordVPN. It protects your privacy, encrypts your data, and provides a ton of options when it comes to accessing streaming services from around the world. Hit up my link in the description down below and go to nordvpn.com slash Saberspark to try it out today. It's risk-free and includes Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Trust me, it's totally worth it for this level of security and online freedom. <sighs> so, Verve. Let's talk more about this hot mess of a situation. For the record, a lot of events happened during the mid-2010s with Frederator and other companies who were involved in this saga. If anything, this story could be its own video with how Frederator kind of fizzled out with its own content. But I'm going to stick with the bullet points here so we can stay focused on Bravest Warriors. Like I already said, Verve is a streaming service that was owned by Crunchyroll and became the new home for season three of Bravest Warriors. It also hosted other partners like Rooster Teeth and Nerdist, plus a mixed bag of old Nickelodeon programs and of course anime from Funimation. All in all, Verve was kind of like a bargain bin of DVDs at the store. Sure, there's some good stuff in that bin, but it's not enough to make most people pay $10 a month for this odd selection of content. Who was the demographic? I don't know. According to a post from six years ago from Fred Seibert, the former CEO of Frederator, quote, Frederator, knowing that cartoons could be different online, launched Cartoon Hangover with Pendleton Ward's Bravest Warriors. Cartoon Hangover found millions of fans and millions of views for the show. But on YouTube, we could never get to the point where we could financially support the amount of episodes and production values that Frederator fans wanted and deserved. We looked at all sorts of solutions to engage Cartoon Hangover fans in a different way, to help us make new cartoons. The Bee and Puppy Cat Kickstarter was our first attempt, and happily for all, a successful one at that, to get fans directly involved. But after a string of challenges that time and again proved Murphy's Law, we are only now getting to the end of that experiment. Frederator knew that there is a worldwide appeal for Bravest Warriors. By this time, late 2014, our old FOF, friend of Frederator, Tom Pickett, had become the big kahuna CEO of Elation, Crunchyroll's owner, and approached Frederator about bringing cartoon hangover shows to their Verve app. Elation has demonstrated a commitment to independent animation content. What better partners are there for Frederator in this effort? End quote. It makes sense that Frederator would partner with someone who they knew and Tom Pickett of Verve was their choice. Now, to be fair, Verve tried to make a name for itself with semi-adult animation on its own platform, with shows like Gary's Demon and Harmon Quest. So it's not unreasonable to think that Bravest Warriors could be a decent fit on the platform, but time would prove them wrong. Now, it's hard to measure the actual metrics of Verve and the viewership of season three of Bravest Warriors, but I would imagine it wasn't what they had hoped for. With most YouTube viewers refusing to use the platform for the ones who, you know, could. Season three launched in January of 2017 exclusively on Verve and only had six episodes, though they were around 11 minutes in length. And just like the season two finale, the season three finale also ended with plenty of loose ends. Now, it's worth mentioning that in October of 2016, Frederator Studios merged with a company called Rainmaker and formed WoW Unlimited Media. From what I can tell from my research, this change would also herald in the conclusion of Frederator operating many of its own YouTube channels, such as Cartoon Hangover and Get in the Robot. This was most likely due to the new executives of WoW Unlimited wanting to slash operation cost. Uh, speaking of cutting cost, season four of Bravest Warriors was announced in April of 2017, though said announcement had some drastic changes in store. For one, one of the most important creators involved with Bravest Warriors, Breen Burns, would not be returning to work on season four. On top of that, the studio that did the hand-drawn animation for seasons one, two, and three, Dongwu Animation, was replaced by the Canadian animation studio Nelvana, who now had plans to create 52 11-minute episodes of Bravest Warriors for season four, animation that would be done entirely via Toon Boom Harmony. 
a noticeable difference compared to season 1 through 3. Also, the voice actor for Chris, Alex Walsh, was let go from the show and was replaced by a Canadian voice actor due to Canadian tax law. And according to him via a Reddit comment of his from five years ago, quote, in order to save money on the production of the show, end quote. Update after update, the remaining fans of Bravest Warriors bore witness to multiple changes to their beloved series. The animation changed, the voice acting changed, a pillar of the show's creative vision had changed. And of course, you have to watch all of this on Verve. Uh, or Teletoon if you're Canadian. In June of 2018, the final episode of Season 4 was released on Verve. And the series was, as far as I can tell, completed. A quiet conclusion for the once massive titan on YouTube. There were rumors of a Catbug spinoff in the works, but nothing has come from it. Also, a lone hint of a Season 5 on the Bravest Warriors Tumblr account, but that looks unlikely to gain any traction. Now, I know it's easy for us to automatically throw Cartoon Hangover, Frederator, Verve, and Nelvana under the bus and blame them all for the failure of Bravest Warriors. But the issue is a bit more complicated than that. If there is a lone entity to blame for this tragic tale, it's YouTube. But in a very passive, non-malicious, roundabout way. For them, their creator initiative was the equivalent of casting a wide net and to see what they could pull back in. Would there be collateral damage in that net? A poor dolphin who's stuck with a couple of tuna? Oh, you bet. But that was not their concern, as long as their platform, in the grand scheme of things, succeed. To which it has. Now, Frederator and Verve rightfully carry responsibility for how events unfolded. Verve, in hindsight, was the wrong choice to stream Bravest Warriors, and the service itself has fallen apart over the years. In March of 2022, it was announced that Crunchyroll would absorb Verve. So, I guess that's the end of that. Also, Cartoon Hangover departed Verve back in December of 2021, leaving the handful of Bravest Warriors viewers who had remained on the streaming service confused. To this day, they still don't have an option to watch season four of Bravest Warriors, which, let's be real here, to the high seas we go, <laughs> Mr. Krabs. Also, there was a Bravest Warriors documentary on Verve some time ago, but for some reason, it's not there anymore. And for the life of me, I cannot find it anywhere on the web. So I guess it's lost media. It's kind of a big shame because I would have loved to have watched it for this video. But standing at the end of this journey, I look back and see a trail of a mess from the end of season two of Bravest Warriors all the way to the end of season four. Frederator desperately tried to make things work, but to no avail. Now, to their credit, they had a heart-to-heart -heart AMA on the Bravest Warriors subreddit about six years ago as they tried to genuinely explain how things unfolded with inheriting Bravest Warriors from YouTube and how difficult the process was in attempting to move it to another streaming service in order to make the series financially sustainable. Yes, they messed up, and they admit their incorrect decisions. But it was all in the effort to try and pivot the success of Bravest Warriors so it could have a future. They took a gamble on Verve and lost and were never able to recapture the original popularity of Bravest Warriors. I'm calling it. Time of death, 1600 hours. We lost a good one. Ooh, ah, come on, man! In conclusion, the fall of Bravest Warriors is surprisingly tragic and is an unfortunate reminder of how difficult it is to transition content from YouTube to other platforms, especially if a paywall might be involved. And especially if it's region locked, Bravest Warriors attempted to stick the landing from YouTube to Verve, but ultimately failed and fizzled out, with only a fraction of its original viewership at the end. The success of a popular web series is built around how accessible it is to viewers. Free content that is easy to watch, what's not to love? But when that content is removed off YouTube and is moved to another site, or God forbid, television, well, most people won't bother to pursue it, and they'll just look for something else to watch. 
for many years. It was incredibly rare for a YouTube-based series or content creator to make a successful jump to traditional mainstream media, though that line is starting to blur. If anything, things are beginning to reverse, as mainstream media and companies are dumping millions into their own YouTube content so that they too can get a piece of the viewership pie. They know that television is virtually dead and that the internet is the new battlefield. Oh, how the darn tables. That being said, being profitable on YouTube via viewership monetization is still a massive challenge, especially back in the early 2010s. Only a fraction of top performing channels can make the big bucks, with animation channels having it particularly rough since animation is, more often than not, a very expensive and time-consuming process. The honeymoon phase for Bravest Warriors back in the early 2010s gave its viewers an unreasonable expectation which, let me make this abundantly clear, is not their fault. Right out the gate, they were acquainted with quality animation, and they grew accustomed to that norm. That's where it started, and you can't fault fans for feeling betrayed when Bravest Warriors was removed off of YouTube, especially for the viewers who were left with no recourse because they're not American. But Frederator had its back up against the wall. Yes, the viewers were on YouTube, but the money wasn't, and making a high-quality animated series is not cheap. YouTube's original funding provided Frederator with a temporary blessing. But then it became somewhat of a curse. It forced them to be the bad guy. They launched the series, and it blew up on YouTube. But then the funding was cut, and now they were stuck holding the bag. What to do? Obviously, they wanted to make the series work. And I guarantee that they shopped it around to distributors. But Verve was the ultimate choice, and that choice did not work out. I feel that timing was never on the side of Bravest Warriors. They were lucky enough to get initial funding from YouTube, but after that dried up, options were few. Frederator most likely pitched Bravest Warriors to TV networks as well. And hey, perhaps the series could have found a home on Cartoon Network or Adult Swim, but who can say? Also, television probably would have dulled the spiciness of Bravest Warriors, so I'm not sure if that would have been worth it. Here's what gets me though. If the streaming war started in the mid-2010s and not the late 2010s, I am almost 99% sure that Netflix would have picked it up. Ironically, being Puppycat, another popular cartoon hangover series, was able to get picked up by Netflix for its second season, which is slated for a release sometime in 2022. Um, perhaps Frederator learned from its mistakes with Bravest Warriors and Verve. I mean, having a larger, more accessible streaming service definitely would have helped. And I feel that the vibe of Bravest Warriors would have been a nice fit for Netflix. Hell, maybe they could still pitch Season 5 to them. Though, unfortunately, Netflix is starting to drastically cut back on their own support for animated content. I guess Bravest Warriors just can't catch a break. Overall, this is my closing statement. What we witnessed with Bravest Warriors was the failure of a very ambitious experiment that backfired tremendously. As much as we viewers love the art aspect of art, it still requires resources, especially on a large scale such as Bravest Warriors. Frederator tried to make it work but failed. They treaded water for years in the hopes of finding a financially viable distributor, which only strained the patience of its dedicated fans. And for these fans to discover after years of waiting that season 3 and 4 would only be available on some obscure website, and that some of them couldn't even use the website, yeah, I'd be upset too. In that regard, Frederator rolled the dice, lost, and paid the price. But I give them props for at least attempting to make it work, especially with the uncharted territory they found themselves in. The odds were against them, and expectations for Bravest Warriors were incredibly high. But hey, at least they tried, and season four is not, in my opinion, terrible. So things could have been much worse, and I think that's worth acknowledging. I mean, hey, at least Bravest Warriors saw the light of day. Unlike the summoning. Oh, oh yeah, you better believe I'm gonna be salty over this one. I wanna see this pilot get picked up and I will will this into existence. By God, you have my word. Oh God, what if I don't?
Turn off the video. Don't look at me. <laughs>